on that RA, this really cool article they published actually the other day was really gave me the feels and maybe miss clubbing. It's the, called The Last Cocktail Day More at Grease Mueller. It's a feature piece um, that they put together with one of their best writers on there, Will Leach. Or was it Will Lynch? Will Leach, how you pronounce his name? Let me see at the bottom here. Uh, Will Lynch from RA uh, put together this really cool ode to uh, Cocktail Day More, one of the premier parties i was saying berlin for the most part for the last five years or so really cool amazing gay night um i think i stumbled across it via maybe an essay daniel wang wrote uh back in the day maybe four or five years ago that was featured on electronic beats and he kind of wrote this amazing essay on the experience that he had around the party the people that he met the sets that he played um just in as a real good way to capture the hedonistic you know values or feelings that were associated with that place and you know being that i went to grace Media prior to going to culture there more i connected with it a lot more and then once you go to culture there more the first time you start to realize okay cool these guys are doing a whole different thing they did do it for a short time they did really they did um do a few culture there more parties in different locations i remember they were in sao paulo they did one in london i'm pretty sure is it london what do they do not in london where they do it somewhere else anyway they did usually sometimes try to have their main people who i think are called disco de mora i think it's called the duo they were they kind of did a few pop-up events here and there or were playing on lineups whatever it may be but if you really wanted to experience the magic of hotel there more you had to go to greece mirror to experience it and um be around the locals but i thought this article was really cool and did a good way of kind of conceptualize or kind of uh putting it into a bit of a time capsule because unfortunately Grish Mueller's closed its doors due to some uh, some um, conflict with the local council. But let's read a little bit of it here. So this is the last dance cut to do more at Grish Mueller on R8. It says the following. Uh, a few weeks before clubs closed across the world, a beloved Berlin party bid farewell to its spiritual home. Here are some moments and memories from the final cocktail de more at Grish Mueller. And it continues. It says here, um, a, few after, a few hours after her set at last cocktail de more at Grace Mueller, Jackie House, the honey sound system DJ, stood in the back of the room, known as Winter Garden, dressed in black and white stripped uh, train conductor's uniform. Outside, rain fell on the shacks and silos in Grace Mueller's muddy backyard. In here, the air was thick and wet, and mostly shirtless crowd forming a people's soup, to quote one onlooker, that poured into every corner. The dance floor, a lumpy stretch of dirt, was packed shoulder to shoulder. People climbed onto whatever race services they could find. Some vogued, others played it cool, chatting or rolling splits as they danced. Jacob Meanhan from the Berlin Party Buttons was playing back to back with Jeffrey Sifri, a Detroit based DJ and friend of Cocktail Family. He released one of their label's best records, a synth pop EP produced by uh, Sophie. Jackie gazed at the scene and quipped, I've never missed this. I've never missed a good funeral party. Which is awesome line there. Um, they put together a really cool playlist too on uh, Spotify called The Last Cocktail Day More and Grace Miller with some of the tracks that were played uh, during that hedonistic moment. It says here, it continues. This is the final party of at Grace Miller, a Berlin club with a former Patty Pasta Factory, sorry, that closed at the beginning of February. It was not the final Cocktail Day More, a beloved gay party that was good around before Grace Miller and will carry on somewhere else. But it was undoubtedly the end of something special. And that's usually the thing about it. Isn't it? I think I remember when I was putting on club night, especially the most popular of the ones I put on so special alibi. Most of the reason why that thing was special or that thing worked at that time was the time and place it happened, the fact that we were all sort of like coming of age at the same sort of time, people were figuring out what they wanted to do in their lives. People naturally had this you know, for the most part, most people figured out what they wanted to do and not wanting to do through um through nightlife and through everything that was happening on that platform. So all those things sort of helped um, to usher in a new generation of creatives and all that sort of good stuff, right? And then once that place, I've noticed, especially with the alibi during the kind of the last few years, once that once it started to, once the council started to kind of put the squeeze in the place, started to limit the hours it was open, started to take away some of the late licenses, and maybe you know some of the owners fell out with some of the past promoters, and people moved on, and people went to other places, and you know life just happened the vibe already started to die and then as soon as the caboose was put on it it was essentially the death of most of the club nights that are on there i'm not sure if there's a lot of them that still survive in other locations because <coughs> especially if you had a good spot they were able to give you a, a promotion run you know every month that was you know that you were more than happy to kind of uh, take them up on 
um, which isn't necessarily the usual thing I've heard from Lursa Club nights. People or people that put on nights still, usually it's more common that you'll get a, a time to put on a party maybe every other month, every other couple of months. So the fact that we were able to have something consistently for the best part of a year booked six months ahead of time was a real blessing at the time and something that you only kind of really uh, appreciate later on down the line, especially when you go to other places and you hear that, you know, when the club night ends, the club ends as well. It's sort of like a double whammy. So if you're a fan of Grease Muda, or even if you're not that big of a fan of Costa de Amor, to find out that not only is that the last party is going to be there, if you're not a fan of it, it's also going to be the end of that party and the end of that club in the first place, which is, you know, apart from maybe Cata Blue or maybe a few other places, I'm not too sure if I think of them from the top of my head. There's not a lot of places like Grease Muda still around in Berlin, you know, the, the really antithesis of like that um, post Berlin Wall falling sort of like run down derelict spaces they don't really exist anymore in that way they use they're mostly polished not polished but they're mostly established bars that have been turned into late night after hour places which is the best part about it that's what i think that's what saves that place generally even though the gentrification looks like it's been affecting everyone it's little by little but i think the fact that bars in general can stay open later they're able to turn like you imagine like a roses bar Right, um, in 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 Cobras Hotel, able to turn that into like a late night hangout spot because you can still have a dance in there and sit down, and you know get freaky with your date that you met on Tinder just the other day. So that still works out. But what can you do? Um, the article continues. It says here in the three year in their five year run at Greece Media, Cotto de Amor built something that earned them a cult following and a chapter in the history of Berlin club culture, which is all you want really. You know, when you put on a night, I guess you can never think. I think um, I heard um. Because I've just finished watching this really cool documentary that I uploaded on my channel. I'll definitely check it out. It's called uh, Berlin Bouncers. It came out last year and it features three prominent bouncers in Berlin. Um, one guy that used to do the dancing at King Size, I forgot his name, Sven, obviously from Berghain, and this guy called Smiley, who has his own little um, company uh, that he runs or kind of, you know, a security firm that he runs in Berlin where he sort of offers up a different idea on, on door pickers and all that sort of good stuff. But that aside, I remember Sven mentioning that documentary that part of, the, uh, part of what makes Berlin Berlin special is that no one ever thought it was going to stay around this long, right? They all, it, I think f they all kind of feel as if like every year is a blessing, every year is a sort of like, oh my God, I can't believe we've still managed to blag this, right? So when you put it on a club night, there is a thing in the back of your head where you know it's not going to last forever. I remember this reading a really cool interview, I forgot who it was with, it might have been something to do with maybe the downtown New York scene back in the day but I remember someone mentioning something that really stuck with me it might have been maybe an Andy Warhol thing that most scenes or most little most club culture things or most scenes only last for four years it might have been even a Michelle Lamy article based on her old cafe restaurant thing that she used to have prior to meeting Rick Owens but I remember something along those lines where they said the subcultures only last for there's a four year cycle so every four years a whole ba new batch of people come in and then they start their own thing and they essentially phase out the oldies and maybe some you know some staunch believers hang on but it sort of has a way of uh, replenishing or you know um, starting the new itself it's a sort of self-correcting system in that sort of way you know some people probably go on to do other things um, I know a lot of people that I started doing club nights with have kind of gone on to do festivals they've kind of gone on to do bigger events they've kind of gone on to start record labels so people kind of evolve and then the space is left for the other people more scrappy kids to come in and sort of fill the void so I guess when you put on these events part of you knows that it's not going to last forever but you just want to be a, a part of like the cultural uh, entertainment sort of timeline you want to, people to kind of look back and when they kind of you know reminisce about days gone by they can include you in their memory like oh yeah i remember you remember that crazy dude that put on that party in that place and that is basically what you do it for you do it for that kind of glory i'm assuming it's similar to rich dudes that want to build skyscrapers right you want to be you want it to be part of your legacy so that when you're long and gone people can kind of look at the little plaque on the outside of the wall and say oh cool that's that guy that did this you know what i mean um, so at least if you're not remembered by your deeds you're at least remembered by the things that you were able to produce i don't know but in its continuous here, it says uh, the music policy was guided by the founders Giacomo uh, Garavellino and Giovanni Torco, aka Disco Disco Droma, the booker Juan Ramos, and the party's 20 some odd resident, which is fucking cool. And again, that's what I mentioned about other places that get wrong. 
this is a club night that runs around Grace Miller, which I'm sure they were able to probably get those guys gigs in the actual club themselves, but they've got 20 rotating residents that always play. So what ends up happening is that for the most of the time that I used to go, I never used to care about the lineup. You just go, I think it's the first Friday of the month, or I forgot, first, whatever it was, and whatever time that is, is on, you just go. You don't care who's playing because you trust and believe that the programming, the talent book or the bookers or whatever it may be, is going to get it right. Um, and of course, as a club themselves, they're given licenses. They're given a license by the club. Maybe again, it's partly too because it's a success, but they're given the opportunity to book people who can actually get a party started, as opposed to just booking the bait people that are going to sell tickets. They kind of be given a bit of a platform to do that too, which doesn't happen often either, right? You, there is a lot of pressure from club managers and stuff to always kind of make sure you're making enough money in the tail which essentially means you have to get bigger people to come in to try partners to come and drink. But then if you have any experience with nights, you will know that when you get a bigger person to come play, they might guarantee um, a lot of people coming into the club, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to get high drink sales because they, people that are aware of clubbing culture will know that your headline act will probably play at the end, right? So they'll probably come later on so they won't drink as much and that will affect your take. It's a whole really fucked up situation, but the way to rectify it is to kind of be as a bar manager or so if you're an event or if you're the person that owns a place is to sort of give the people that are putting on the nights uh you know uh basically a remit that they just put on something fun that they enjoy obviously they have to reach a certain threshold in order to kind of make it sustainable or worthwhile but not really push them too much in order to kind of make a lot of money at the till because especially in the formative years of a club night once you're trying to find your legs and trying to find your sound and your tribe it's never going to be that successful anyway you want people to kind of trust and believe in your vision and over time as you build a relationship with the djs and the agents and the bookers you can then grow it from there it says the following year the turning of residence was bold and refined covering disco house rave and chill out the kind of strange architecture with its free rooms and countless hiding places and sprawling garden along a dirty canal created a surreal sense of alternate reality i don't really agree with that there's the times i spent chatting aimlessly about you know world domination with an absolute stranger i just met two minutes ago was one of the best moments i've had you know tram tramping up onto the whole uh, platform the, the winter garden thing where you sit on the top and you sort of act like a big kid and look over the sunset is incredible it says um the the, the, the regulars together with Gishmir staff and former and cold cocktail crew formed a massive cheeky family it's a quote it says uh, that's what made it so special said trent one of the resident DJs alongside his friend Dra uh, dama you were sure to find everybody on the first saturday of the month here uh, we went to basically every cocktail sometimes we were not supposed to play and then the club was too packed to close so we go home pick our records and dj till monday morning that's the dream really in it imagine that rocking up to fold one day and then they say oh look the guys didn't turn up or you know he fell asleep can someone play that'll be the dream and it continues here said if you ever look at the cocktail facebook group it's like thousands of people said one ramos the party's booker and one of the resident djs if you go to any uh, metropolitan city london new york paris everyone probably has a gay friend who can say oh yeah i've been to cocktail which is one of the things that you want in it you want that and again it reminds me of a little bit um love fever that was a really seminal sort of night in london too that was that kind of had this allure to it that um it's still there now i think if they were able to put on the night but it was a very special moment but this is you know some of the pictures on here are flipping the fantastic really recommend check i'm not gonna read the entire thing because it's quite long but it's a really cool essay you've got some some cool little flyers as well from the event jesus knows you're masturbating you got riding on the cock of the world some really cheeky kind of post-its here you've got this one says life is short and there's always uh, and there will always be dirty dishes so let's dance i definitely agree with that one you've got this amazing image of a guy kicking someone's feet on his knees with knee pads just some great stuff you've got this very great neon light at the background here that sort of looks like a cross that people are sort of dancing in front of which is really ominous but we really recommend you check it out a super cool um essay written by one leech published the other day um again a really cool odd to it hopefully they're able to find a new home for the place because i would love to visit it once everything settles down but for those of you that have been to gush miller r.i.p and let the memories live on let the memories live on smooth